Welcome to the museum where we preserve and display the history of Clarkdale. This is one of a series of multimedia presentations that will take you beyond the visiting public's view. When you have left this presentation, please visit our website to learn more. Once there, you will have the opportunity to support our mission by becoming a member of the Clarkdale Historical Society and Museum. Please enjoy this presentation. This is a story of the very beginnings of Clarkdale, and it will be illustrated with photos from the collection of the Clarkdale Historical Society and Museum. The year was 1910, and copper magnate William Andrews Clark was still enjoying profits from his United Verde Copper Company smelter and mine in Jerome, but he was looking to make some improvements. Parts of the mine had been suffering underground fires for many years, caused by the combustion of highly flammable particles of sulfur dust created in the mining process. If the Jerome smelter were removed, it would allow the mine to be converted to an open pit, enabling crews to finally extinguish the fires, as well as providing access to additional copper ore located below the smelter. Clark also had concerns about the town of Jerome itself. It had sprouted on a hillside in the late 1800s to support two copper mines and their workers, but it had become a crowded an unevenly developed town that suffered from occasional landslides and devastating fires. Clark began a search for a location and an possible town site in 1910. He set out to fulfill his ambition to create a town, a master plan community, that would be one of the most modern of its time. He eventually located a relatively flat parcel of land in the valley just below Jerome and near a water source, the Verde River. Clark proceeded to acquire land nearby where some members of the Yavapai and Tato Apache tribes lived in temporary settlements along the Verde River. The tribes had originally lived in the Verde Valley long before the appearance of white settlers, but they were forcibly removed from the area in 1875 by the U.S. government. When small numbers of tribe members returned in about 1900, they had few resources and no property rights. Once Clark obtained the land where he intended to build his town and smelter, the native people did their best to survive outside the town borders. Some of the men would eventually work in the smelter, and the children would attend what was known as an all-Indian school in the town. Clark and his advisors began by inspecting the farms and ranches along the east bank of the Verde River, which were already established. In 1911 and 1912, he bought land and water rights from W.A. Jordan, who had been farming in the area since 1880. Jordan would remain on the land and continue to supply produce to Jerome, Clarkdale, and other Verde Valley towns until the environmental conditions deteriorated due to smelter operations. By 1913, Clark's United Verde Copper Company controlled 1,200 acres of land, which included the town site on the west bank of the Verde River and the farmland on the east bank. Clark intended to create a company town that would be unmatched anywhere in the world. Unlike the fire-prone wooden buildings of Jerome, the new town would have homes built from bricks using a good source of clay on the banks of the Verde River. The new town would have plenty of room for neatly arranged houses, open park space, and a centralized business district. Clark's plan for his community clearly followed the principles of the City Beautiful movement, conceived at the turn of the 20th century. This concept held the belief that beauty, order, and a well-planned and well-constructed town 
created an environment which influenced human thought and behavior in a positive way. Elements of a city beautiful included open spaces, parks, up-to-date facilities, neat, clean dwellings with aesthetically pleasing streets, and sidewalks with streetlights. Clark hoped this town would attract a more reliable and consistent worker than other transient mining towns. The master plan for the community not only encompassed the smelter and the residential areas, but the full range of infrastructure to supply all the needs of Clark's smelter employees. Work started on the business district in 1914, and it slowly progressed to fill the downtown block of Main Street in Clarkdale. One of the first businesses was the T.F. Miller Mercantile Store, owned and operated by the brother-in-law of William Clark. The Shot Cafe and Bakery occupied the north side of Main Street. Clarkdale residents could easily reach downtown by foot, by horse, or by that novelty known as the automobile. Those wishing to travel to other cities could use the newly built Santa Fe train station, which served trains using the new railroad that Clark had built through the Verde River Canyon to connect to established rail lines in the Prescott area. Other facilities built for Clarkdale residents were a public school built in 1915, and a post office completed in 1918. At the same time, further west on Main Street, a beautiful town park was started in 1915. Although the town was designed specifically to support the copper smelter, it was a fairly nice place for the workers to live. Compared to other rural towns, Clarkdale was full of brand new houses and businesses made exceptionally modern with plumbing and electricity fully installed. After almost two decades and one million dollars of William Andrew Clark's money, his master plan of an orderly and productive mining town was fulfilled. Thus, Clarkdale was born.